Okay, the specimen that we are going to look today is the stomach. Now, the first thing that we have to understand in the stomach is how to hold it in anatomical position. So for that, we have to know which one is the cardiac end and which one is the pyloric end. So there is a very simple technique or a very simple method. You can see that we have an opening over here and we have one opening over here. The simple thing is just hold both the openings and see which one is tighter or which one is more harder. The harder portion is going to be the pyloric end. So this one, which is the harder portion, this is going to be the pyloric end. Okay. This is harder because here the circular muscles have hypertrophic. Okay, so this is the cardiac end and this is the pyloric end. The second thing that we have to understand is the curvatures. So we have the lesser curvature and we have the greater curvature. So we have to make sure that the lesser curvature is on the right side and the greater curvature is on the left side. So when we know all these things, the anterior surface, this is the anterior surface is quite superior as compared to the posterior. So the anterior surface is placed superiorly the cardiac orifice is on the upper part and the pyloric part is on the lower part so this is the anatomical position of the stomach okay all right now as we all know the stomach consists of a cardiac opening where the esophagus is going to come and open this is present basically at the level of t11 and the second opening is over here the second orifice which is known as the pyloric orifice the pyloric orifice is present at the level of L1. The next thing that we can see over here is this margin. This is known as the lesser curvature. The lesser curvature can be considered as the right border of the stomach. In the lesser curvature, you can see that we have a notch over here. This notch is known as angularis incisura. Okay. Over here, this is the greater momentum. Lesser curvature gives attachment to the lesser momentum, the peritoneal fold, and the greater curvature gives attachment to the greater curvature. Okay, the stomach can be divided into various parts. From the cardiac orifice, what we can do is we can put an imaginary line and the structure present over here, over the imaginary line or above the imaginary line is known as the fundus. This is the area which is usually filled with gas or air and this fundus sometimes goes up till the fifth intercostal space. Now we know that in the fifth intercostal space we have the apex of the heart. So the fundus of the stomach can sometimes cause cardiac distress. The second is from the angularis incisura we can give a horizontal line so above the horizontal line, this whole section can be considered the body. And this section, this is going to be the pylorus. The pylorus is assumed to be 10 centimeters long, where the 7.5 centimeters is going to be the pyloric antrum and the last 2.5 centimeter being the pyloric canal. So these are the structures that you can see in a stomach, the cardiac orifice, the pyloric orifice, the lesser curvature giving attachment to the lesser momentum the greater curvature giving attachment to the greater momentum in the anterior superior surface this right section is covered by the liver so we have the liver over here the second margin where my thumb is present this is basically the costal margin the left costal margin and on the lower section sometimes we have the transverse color so the triangular area that has been formed over here by the boundaries of the liver the liver, the costal margin and the transverse colon, this area is known as the gastric triangle. Okay, the posterior surface, the posterior inferior surface is usually related to the structures which are going to form the stomach bed. So what are the structures forming the stomach bed? We have the anterior surface of the left kidney, the left suprarenal gland, the anterior surface of the pancreas, the splenic artery. So these are the structures which are going to form the splenic, splenic bed. Now, let's look at the interior of the stomach. Now, what we have done here is we have given an incision from the greater curvature and has opened the stomach. Now, while opening, you can see that we have presence of these folds which are known as rugues. You can see there are many irregular folds which are known as rugues. Okay. 
in between the rugiers, you can see the presence of pits. These pits, these are going to be the openings of the gastric canals. So we have the gastric pits over here, where the gastric cells are located. Now, the mucosal fold that you can see over here, known as the rugiers, are usually arranged in a longitudinal fold along the lesser curvature. Here we have the lesser curvature. Along the lesser curvature, it is usually longitudinal, and this longitudinal area is known as and this longitudinal area forms a canal which is known as the gastric canal of Megenstroos. Okay, so gastric canal of Megenstroos. Okay, so here sometimes a question arises: Why is the pyloric orifice so big or so hard? The pyloric orifice becomes hard because of the hypertrophy of the muscles. Which muscles? Basically, the circular fibers, the fibers which are present in the stomach, the circular muscle, muscular fibers, along with the deep sets of the longitudinal fibers. So this is all about the demonstration of stomach.